Welcome to the NCW Life magazine. On this week's episode, we're spotlighting the restoration of the famous Larry's Drive-In sign with Grabeel Signs in Wenatchee. On Rock Island Road in East Wenatchee is a little drive-in with a big reputation throughout the valley. Larry's Drive-In, or as some of the locals call it, Larry's Chicken, was founded and named for Larry Johnson in 1954. As the name alludes, the drive-in is famous for its boneless chicken strips. While the recipe at Larry's remains the same, the business is receiving a facelift. New owners Laura and Hank Graves, who bought the restaurant from longtime owner Gary Nunn a year ago, say it was time to give the icon of a sign some much-needed love. I tried retiring twice, couldn't do it, and I've known the last owners, well, I've known every owner in the business, and I just swung in, talked to Gary, and... And he was ready to, to sell, and handed him paperwork and said, okay, here you go, and it was very easy, the process, and so it was meant to be. Born and raised in East Wenatchee, Laura and Hank say they've been eating at the local drive-in since they were kids. Eric Johnson, the son of Larry Jr., visited the drive-in recently for his 60th birthday dinner and helped give the Graves some history of the restaurant. Oh, the history of this place is awesome. It's just oh, so many people know of it, and it's just part of Wenatchee, and it's unique. And, uh, Bring back the yeah. nostalgia of the yeah. building and the business. Yeah. Since taking over the business, Laura and Hank are working to bring back the 60s vibe to the drive-in, starting first by returning to the original hours and revamping the menu, and now bringing a vintage look to the building with the restoration of the Larry's sign. The bottom part of the neon went out, and I so had... So it was L-A-R, Lair. And I had Monty come over and fix it, and then about a month later, the top went out, so uh, we, I called Monty and when. Originally, he said, do you ever think about restoring it? And I said, yeah, we've thought about it, but we knew it was expensive. So when the top went out, I called him up and I said, just come get it. Yeah. Let's just do it. Yeah. And it's turned out to be a good project, other than people when the sign went down thought we were out of business. Yeah, thought we were closed, so, but yeah. But it's back now. <laughs> The couple says at first they were just looking to bring fresh paint to the sign, but after seeing some examples of the shabby chic vintage look, they couldn't help but give it a shot. Yes, he had me go look at some stuff that he had done in the mm -hmm. past, and at first I didn't want to do it because it was a lot more expensive than just painting the sign, but the more my wife and I talked about it, she told me I was going to spend the money and do yeah. it. Yeah. So I thought, oh, hopefully it's not too late because by that time, Monty already had the sign, and I thought, oh, I hope it's not too late. So he called him and he says, nope, we got time. So and he was happy to hear that we had changed our minds. With Hank bringing his 15 years of experience in the kitchen, the couple hand cuts and breads the chicken, selling about 400 five-piece chicken dinners a day, and they're still serving up the same recipe. Yes. Since original. 1954, the chicken recipe and the tartar sauce recipe are the original. Yes. We do uh, our fish, which was recently picked as number eight in the state For restaurant. Onlyinyourstate.com. Yeah. And then we just recently went to a larger burger patty, which is 100% Angus. And we just recently started a pork loin sandwich. And we're just trying to do Try different things. Bring it back to the original state of quality and mm -hmm. something that no one else offers. Back in the restaurant industry, Hank says their favorite part of running Larry's Drive-In is working with their young employees to help them get started in the job market. And the number one thing I hear from the young kids coming in is, no one will hire me because I don't have any experience. Mm -hmm. well, well, there's only one way you can get experience and that's by getting hired. So we bring as many of them on as we can. For me, one of the best parts about having this is, is being able to work with the kids, giving them an mm -hmm. opportunity to learn how to work. Mm -hmm. I've gone up to Eastmont and talked to Lance Noel, the principal there, and asked him if he had any kids on the fence that could go either way, if he'd send them our way and we'll work with them. And he's done that with a couple of kids and they've turned out fantastic. Yeah, we've really got a good crew, we've got some good people, and, and they have fun in here, which is good. With a fresh new look, Laura and Hank say they'll get busy painting the rest of the drive-in to match the bold red of their new neon sign. So we've seen the final product, but how did they get there? Monty Graybill, president at Graybill Signs, says the restoration process starts by carefully removing the old sign and taking it back to the shop. First we go out there and take the sign down, try to do as little damage as we can, um, 
things were done differently back in the 50s and 60s and sometimes it requires a little more effort to get something down in one piece than it might now but uh, remove the sign bring it back to the facility start stripping it out trying to get the paint off um, the first hurdle or challenge was the fact that once we got the paint off uh, we couldn't get anything to stick to it so um, there was that and then we start building back up the paint coatings make sure all the glass works uh, we did rebuild the chicken in full color which just was uh, kind of a fun thing for us and uh, Larry's chicken um, now it's in the assembly process and will be uh, put back up in one piece so. When it comes to this type of work, Monty says it's important to have a staff of creative people to tackle any challenges along the way. Yeah, every person that we have in here is a very creative type of person. And that would be, I think, from your, you know, the designer to fabricators, painters, you name it. Um, this industry is very fluid. There's something new every day. And so these people, um, they just fit into it. They have a way of uh, creating and solving problems that uh, that maybe the average person, the linear type person can't do. So we've got uh, lots of people, our painter for example, not only just an automotive type finished painter, but he'd be an airbrush artist and just an artist in general. So all that stuff feeds right into uh, say our shabby chic or just about anything else we might use for a painter. Um, we've got all kinds of folks in here. We've got a guy that's a scientific illustrator and uh, he works in our vinyl department. Um, so you never know what they're going to come from, but they're all creative personalities and uh, that can set itself up for an interesting day in itself, but uh, it's what we do in the sign business. Throughout this project, the team at Graybill Signs is always helping each other when needed, lending a hand on a dicey move, or making a tedious task go by faster. Well, I think there's some flexibility and um, cross-training that takes place in a small company, no matter what kind of company it is. And so, yeah, we encourage that here. But I think the culture in general contributes to that ability to just get in and help, because everybody needs that help once in a while and so um, if you're able to uh, get everybody to a place where they can um, jump in and be willing it, it sure makes it a lot easier coming up next on the ncw life magazine we'll go behind the scenes of the restoration project for the larry's drive-in sign with the staff at graybill we'll be right back welcome back to the ncw life magazine Casey Sekowich, tube bender at Graybill Signs, is working on the new neon chicken that will crown the top of the new sign. Casey has been tube bending throughout the state for the last 20 years. I was taught by a tube bender years and years ago, and I just kind of followed on how he did it and kind of changed things a little bit as I went along. And there's books on tricks of the trade for it and all kinds of little things you can pick up, but it's kind of what you're comfortable with. He says two benders should think of themselves as illusionists at times, bending glass into the forms that can be recognized from a distance. It's kind of hard to tell what this is until you're, you're really done with the whole process. So if you were to look at it that way, it doesn't look like much. But the whole idea is everybody's going to be looking at it front to back, so then you can, you'll think that's a circle more than just a lump of stuff. Well, one of the guys that uh, trained me initially he said being a neon person is kind of being an illusionist. You've got to take something that normal, if you look at it closely, it just looks like a lot of stuff and uh, be able to know how to block it out in the right areas and, and make it look like something from a distance. Throughout his career, he's worked on projects big and small, including neon for businesses like Starbucks and Red Robin. Safeco Field, I did that glass before it just recently turned over to whatever it is now, I can't remember. Texas A&M, just big neon, just like, this, this is just like you see in Vegas. For this project, the sign will keep its original neon lettering, but a new neon chicken is what Casey is spending his time carefully crafting for the very top of the sign. He says the business had replaced the neon chicken previously before this restoration with a clear red unit. So that was the idea with this, is to restore it back to the way it was originally and using colored glass instead of clear red. 
that he still wants to hold on to this just in case somebody destroys it. And we can replace it real fast. And this is the difference. This has got neon in it, and then that one has argon and mercury in that one. I traced that off the original one that was on there, so needless to say, I'm not a very good artist. <laughs> I couldn't draw a straight line with a ruler, but somehow I can do this. When I draw it out, I plan it out, how the colors are going to go together. Uh, I put thought into what type of gas we're going to put into it as far as neon or argon. Um, then that all depends on what colors you're putting together. Working on the outline of the chicken, Casey is using white, red, and yellow glass to create the new version. I kind of saved this part of the chicken for last because I knew it would be kind of frustrating. There's a lot going on here. Because a lot of times you can't just bend in a straight line. and You can't start from one end and go to the other. You have to kind of think about how you're folding this and are you possibly going to be running into your own bends. And sometimes I can't. Like you see on these where I pre-put the electrode on the end of them, sometimes I don't get that uh, luxury of doing it that way. I have to either make it in two pieces, which I'm kind of doing here, which I think is going to turn out to four pieces, or I have to start from a top corner and kind of work my way out, and you have to skip bends and have, be able to measure that out and then come back and then close it up. The biggest thing is being able to visualize what you're about to do. Sometimes you have to practice it before you do it. Because you can be a long ways into a unit, and then when you make that mistake of either touching hot glass to hot glass, you're done. It, it could ruin your day. <laughs> Sometimes gravity can be your friend. I'm heat it up. I have to say that last bend I pulled off is, was a lucky one. <laughs> That's a, that was kind of a tough one. I didn't expect it to work out the first time. And again, I just kind of plan out my path with my hose. And then I make corresponding marks on my pattern so I have an idea where it's supposed to hit. And it kind of tells me where the end of my glass is going to lay when I'm done. Coming up to a spot where I gotta splice in a different color of glass. And it's relatively easy to cut. Casey multitasks as he works, bending various sections of the unit while also processing the glass to add the proper gases for the neon. So, what we do with this machine before we even uh, introduce the gases into it, we uh, cook it at uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, by uh, running a large amount of electricity through it under a vacuum. And uh, that way it gets all the impurities out of it and it makes it as clean as possible. So we don't get, it makes the tube last longer. It's, um, the better you do this process, the better and longer the glass will last. But what you're seeing is uh, just the electricity lighting the uh, air, oxygen air that we breathe in the middle of the tube. And it's not under 100% vacuum either. It's just a controlled arc. So I have a gauge, temperature gauge here that says what it is currently, and it's about 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And I also look at the end of those little metal things on either end. Those are called electrodes. And I look for them to start turning red. I want to get them cherry red. Because there's also a coating on those that I have to burn off. And I open up all my gauges here and we draw it down to almost a perfect vacuum and then we'll introduce the gas uh, which this one will take argon and the mercury. After a few minutes Casey comes back to introduce the gas into the unit and take it off the machine. And then there it is ready to come off the machine. He works the mercury manually through the unit from one electrode to the other. I'll remove this portion and even we call this tipping and even this process is just as important as the rest to make sure that it looks nice and it's done nice and even because if you have une uneven glass at the top of it after you do this they tend to crack and once this cracks the unit is destroyed 
And then I just take it and I work it to the other side of the unit. And sometimes with this kind of glass, I can see it actually, it's hard to see where you're at with the little ball of mercury on the inside. So if you don't do it, it'll just be dim on one end of the unit. And sometimes if I'm lucky, let me show you guys something. You roll the mercury through the unit. Oh, there we go. See that? Oh, yeah. That's the mercury inside the unit. It needs to get warm enough to kind of vaporize inside the unit, and then it'll all be even. This process probably takes about 15, 20 minutes, depending on the size of the unit. Casey continues this process on the unit, bending glass to take the form of the new chicken and processing it with his machine. While Casey continues his work on the neon, Tony Hoffman, a painter at Graybill Signs and local airbrush artist, starts his work bringing new life to the body of the Larry's Chicken sign. Welcome back to the NCW Life magazine. We're catching up with Tony Hoffman, also known as Hoff, around the shop at Graybill Signs, who is working on bringing fresh paint to the Larry's Drive-In sign. Um, uh, I'm an airbrush artist, custom painter, uh, pinstripe artist. Um, yeah, I've been doing that since I was, yeah, a little kid. And so it's just progressed. Yeah, it's led me everywhere, really. I mean, I do stuff all over the place for a lot of different people and yeah but I've been here for solid yeah for eight years now. After bringing the original sign into the shop the guys stripped the sign of its neon and Hoff got to work stripping the old layers of paint. Yeah we stripped all the paint off of there several <laughs> layers of paint um, and um, yeah and cleaned it and prepped it um, I, I'll use that word a lot, prepped for paint. He says a sign coming in for restoration usually has two or three layers of paint, but the Larry sign was a bit unusual. It was a solid seven, but I, there was, I think there was more up towards 12 coats of paint on there. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it was ridiculous. When you get film thickness, then that's when that those under layers don't really like layers of paint on top of them. So that's kind of why you want to strip all that off and start fresh. Prepping the surface with an array of cleaners, primers, and sealers, Hoff starts his work on the new surface. And then now we're going to put, because the paint job is going to be patina, to make it look like it's old. <laughs> so we're going to put multiple layers on in a kind of a textured uh, fashion so that we can sand through those um, finishes to get that patina look, that old look. Working with specific formulas, he mixed three colors for the base of the sign, including a dark gray, a light gray, and a white, which will be the color of the letters. It takes a lot to make one color. It's, you wouldn't, you know, um, if it's an automotive finish or, or even these, it's, you know, like this, one dark gray is um, five, five different colors to make that one color. So, and then you can see that we started with a white. Using a spray gun to apply the paint, he gets to work with the base colors that will eventually show through in selected areas to create that patina look. With his artistic background, I couldn't resist asking Hoff what his favorite color is. I kind of like a uh, clear <laughs> actually I know that sounds funny but um, so when you do like any artwork or um, especially when you do artwork when you add clear over the top of it it brings out all the colors that are underneath and uh, it gives it that that lasting look, that sheen. Even if you do a flat or satin or clear or a gloss clear, it all is going to be a little bit different, but that's it just brings out those colors and that's kind of why clear is my favorite color. Yeah. Working at a quick pace, he says sometimes with a song stuck in his head, he works almost robotically to apply the paint evenly. So you have to overlay um, your strokes with the gun and in a pattern um, to create an even um, surface. Um, 
so yeah, I kind of just, I get in a definite groove, yeah, especially when I'm painting. After completing the base colors and letting them dry, Hoff and Casey work together to apply a mask for the letters on the sign. The mask is a material meant to cover the white areas for the letters before painting the final colors over the top. The mask is peeled away after Hoff paints the final colors, a layer of orange with red over top. Yeah, it's like Christmas, you know, you, you work so hard to, and a lot of times, you know, this is, this part could go really good or really bad real quick, you know, it's, uh, or, you know, just how it's going to look, you know, that kind of really gives you a, an idea towards the finished uh, product. The, 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 like the original color was an orange color and um, I matched to that the best that I could. So uh, you'll see a little bit of that, but yeah, I kind of want to maintain some of that history. After removing the mask to reveal the white lettering, Hoff began sanding through the colors to create the patina look, otherwise known as shabby chic. Uh, uh, put a bunch of different colors on and then uh, um, start wiping the outside colors to get to the uh, sanding through those colors to get to the color underneath. As he got to work sanding, Hoff said he's happy with how the texture is all coming together. I'm really loving how the halo of the of the white, I don't know if you can see like how this white and then there's a halo of orange and gray to create like this, this hole. And that was all in, um, in the way I sprayed it, I, you know, I created different textures as I was spraying, um, knowing that, you know, it's gonna, that's what that end result's gonna be. I think it's gonna look really good, especially with the glass on it. It really adds a whole different dimension to it. How does he celebrate a job well done? What? Yeah, I'm definitely not going to the bar hanging out with that <laughs> With the new neon complete and the paint job looking fresh yet vintage, the crew works together to reassemble the parts and prepare it for installation. On site, Graybeal's install crew carefully lifts the restored sign back on the roof of the drive-in. While it was a little nerve-wracking watching the old sign taken down and disassembled, the couple says watching the crew at Graybeal raise their neon again brought a smile to their faces. Yeah. It was kind of exciting. I wanted, it was for me because I just wanted to, to get back to the old nostalgic feel of the building and so for them to take it down, redo it and bring it back to life, I thought was just well worth the money. These guys knew their stuff. Grayville is great. Yeah. And this, this, this whole building is around the 50s and 60s and mm -hmm. that really brings it back. It fits. Obviously we didn't realize how many people noticed it until it wasn't there anymore. Um, they can see it from the highway so much better. It has new neon on it, so it's brighter. What's Monty's favorite part of this process? You know, I'm going to like to see the client when that sign's up in the air. That's, that's what I uh, feed on and uh, makes my job worthwhile. But uh, no, there, it's just a lot of fun watching this stuff start to finish. You can visit Larry's Drive-In and soak in the nostalgia at 120 Rock Island Road in East Wenatchee to check out their new sign and grab a chicken dinner. That's going to do it for the NCW Life magazine today. If you have a magazine idea or want to provide feedback, contact me, Caitlin Hedersheet, at caitlin at ncwlife.com.